I, I know many of you have seen this, so I'm just going to flip through it quick, but it shows how different companies own other companies. And so there's really just a few companies at the top that own the most of the bulk seed suppliers. These aren't home garden seed suppliers, but these are the bulk seed suppliers. And you can see how many Monsanto owns and DuPont and et cetera. And uh, here's, you know, Asgro Seed Company, it's now Monsanto, Decal Monsanto, Seminus Monsanto, and there's, you know, some of their agriculture brands. And now Bayer is buying Monsanto in the process of buying Monsanto, so it just keeps, the groups just keep getting larger and larger. Just since we came into business 20 years ago, the groups have just kept merged and merged and merged. So now the seed supply, like in many cases, maybe 55 or 60 percent of one crop is owned by one company. The entire seed supply of the planet of, say, lettuce might be owned by one company now. And speaking of lettuce, um, the older varieties, there's so, many, so much fascinating diversity, especially in Asia, but also in Europe. Um, this is Celtus, which has a long stem. It tastes uh, similar to a little bit like cucumber, crunchy, crisp. Delicious uh, leaves as well, but amazing stems, great for cooking, but also fresh eating, pickling. It's one of those crops that Americans aren't familiar with that much here, but if you go to Asia, it's everywhere in the markets. If you go to Chinatown here, you'll see it sometimes in the market, and occasionally at farmer's markets, but mostly it's in home gardens, and a tremendous crop. It's a has been in America for you know 150, approximately 150 years, but it just hasn't taken off, but it's one of those crops that should be you know, in every garden. Indian cauliflower is another thing we've been experimenting with. India is a hot, humid country overall, and there's some cauliflower varieties there we've been experimenting with that have uh, matured in as little as 40 days, uh, direct from seed. So, um, and some of them are fairly small. Some of them might be like four inch heads, but still it's a tremendous crop for people in short seasons, hot seasons. Um, there's a lot of diversity out there and a lot of uh, knowledge out there in different cultures. Even if something isn't native to their culture, like cauliflower to India, they had to make it adapt to their climate. And so they've uh, done a really good job on cauliflower. Three or four months ago, we were in Japan visiting Noguchi Seed Company. They're an all heirloom seed company right outside of Tokyo, out, up in the mountains. And they have about 500 Japanese heirlooms. Many of them are in danger of extinction. And uh, many of them are some of the best heirlooms on the planet, really uh, delicious varieties that are you know, anywhere from 50, but many of them are probably in the two to 500 year old range. And some of them are 1,000 years old, but they're maintaining. And in some cases, they're the only company left maintaining these old varieties, and they're all owned now, uh, the, company, the guy that owns the company is probably in his late 70s, and he took over the company 40, 50 years ago. He was a comic book writer, or a comic book artist, and he, next door to his seed shop, he has a building equally as big with all his comic books. But uh, he, he, his father was getting elderly, and he went and took over the family business and has done an amazing job maintaining it. Everywhere you go, you'll find people like this. Almost every country has somebody maintaining the, the history and the story of the seeds. There's our daughter, Sasha, with the Kyoto red carrot. Uh, the chef last night was uh, our friend from Australia was talking about his favorite carrots, and these are definitely our favorites, too. They get super long. They're meant for winter and fall growing, not for spring growing. But we get like 18-inch long uh, tubers in our greenhouse in Missouri, perfect. As long as you have to have loose, deep soil, but you get the best flavor of any carrot if you grow these in the winter. And uh, it's just super high uh, nutrition as well. This is the Sikkim cucumber from uh, Indi northern India. And uh, there's multiple, throughout India, Pakistan, over into South Asia, there's multiple varieties of these brown-skinned cucumbers. The interesting thing about them is, unlike other cucumbers which you harvest when they're fresh, they go bad in about three or four days, unless you put them in the refrigerator, you might get a week. These will keep sometimes up to months um, even out in a cool, like an air-conditioned room or in a root cellar. They have a hard, thick skin. They have a delicious, sweet flavor. You just have to peel them and seed them. But again, it's a crop that, you know, traditionally people would use because they didn't want cucumbers just once a year. So, I mean, it would be a way to add cucumbers months into the year. And these were found growing up on the mountainsides when I think it was, I forgot the explorer's name that found them in like the 1850s, but he said the locals consumed vast amounts of these cucumbers when they were in season as one of their major food sources. And so they, another variety that was discovered long ago. This variety has gotten a lot of press lately, the Mexican sour gherkin. Yeah, people that grow for restaurants, restaurants love this variety. Home gardeners love it, kids love it. It's just a little tiny cucumber relative, fun to grow, easy to grow in general. Orange Glow Watermelon, it was introduced probably about 1960 by the Wilhite Seed Company. They've dropped it. Um, it's just one of the best orange watermelons out there. It has deep orange flesh with like citrusy overtones. 
And again, it's another variety that's only a couple companies are left are offering it. Another example of rare watermelons, the Royal Golden is uh, one of our favorite watermelons. It has delicious red flesh and a bright golden rind, so you know when it's ready to eat, it turns from a pale green to a deep golden uh, yellow, almost orange sometimes. Uh, these yellow rinded watermelons were documented in the 1880s, and again, they're almost, uh, They've almost totally disappeared from our food supply. Golden Crispy is an Asian type of melon. There's lots of different variants of these small Asian melons, mostly uh, common in uh, Japan and Taiwan and uh, also Korea. China has some and throughout Asia. But the neat thing about them is they mature in a super quick uh, climate, short climate, uh, the same as the cucumbers practically, about like cucumbers. And you can get up to like, I think we counted 27 like one pound fruits on one plant a couple of weeks ago when we were harvesting. So they can have a vast amounts of fruit on fairly tidy plants. And one of my favorite vegetables of all time is the bitter melon. This is the Taiwan white. We found these in a market in Taiwan a few years ago. The white varieties have less bitterness, but they still have the same health benefits, although maybe on a slightly less scale, but you just, you can eat more of them because they're less bitter. But they have more than just bitter in the flavor. It's like chocolate, it's slightly bitter, but it has many uh, complex tones to it. Similar to a summer squash in some ways, crisper, but more rich in flavor. It's very, uh, it's slightly minerally, um, very, very delicious, and you can use it in stir fries, in soups. Some people even use it in salads. They use it in ice creams. Uh, my wife makes a smoothie out of a delicious smoothie. And um, people in the U.S. need to get more used to the bitter taste because uh, uh, in Taiwan, there's been many studies showing, the, and China and throughout Asia, many studies showing the health benefits of eating these and other bitter foods, uh, well documented. In the U.S., there's not many studies done on it, but in Asia, it's well documented uh, health benefits from uh, eating bitter foods, in particular, the bitter melon. And it's super fun and easy to grow, by the way. Bitter melons, easy to grow, and it's one of the most beautiful plants in the garden. It looks like ivy, and uh, the whole plant and the fruit is all ornamental. Here's the Thai purple ribbed eggplant, another variety we brought back from Thailand. Just gorgeous fruit. I don't know the history of this variety, but these ribbed eggplants are quite popular in Thailand. There's the Thai long green eggplant. It's slightly more uh, cold resistant than other eggplants, so it's a good variety to try if you're on a coastal climate. It still needs heat, though but um, it's a slightly more cold tolerant and it also is fairly heat tolerant as well. So uh, a good, delicious eggplant um, with a unique color. Hi, I'm Harvey Hubble. You're watching Seedling.TV, nourishing mind, body, and planet. Subscribe now. It's good for you. <laughs>